this video, we're going to take a closer look at adding content onto your ThoughtFarmer internet. For this example, we're going to set up a new group page for our human resources team. So we're in here on our internet, we are in the section that has all of our department groups, and we're going to set up a new one. To start from the department section, I'm going to click the add or plus sign in the upper right corner to create a new page. I'm going to give it a title. And I might also give it a quick description here in the rich text editor. I'm going to take advantage here of the add mentioned functionality to highlight Ben as the key contact for the human resources team. After adding my title and my description, I'm going to move on to the right hand side of the page where I'm going to choose the content type. Content type is something you always want to take a look at before you publish new information on the internet. In one of our other videos, we have a detailed overview of all of the different content types that are available in Thought Farmer. So if you haven't watched that one yet, go ahead and look at it first. In this case, of course, I'm setting up a team space for different people in the human resources team. So I'm going to make this a group page. Depending on the content type you select, you will see that there is different types of options that come up in the center of the page. Because I'm setting up a group page, the first thing it's going to ask me is to select the type of group I'm creating. In this case, it's pretty straightforward. I'm creating a department group, so I'm going to make that group type department. Note that you have many other options here. And if you think of other types of groups that make sense for your organization, um, you can always add them in the admin panel. Think of, you know, practice areas, social groups. Those group types can be added in the admin panel under the content section. For now, I'll just select department here. Next, I'm going to move on to adding people to my group. And that is where membership comes in. There's three different options for setting up membership on the group. The first one that's still selected by default, as you can see, is our open membership. This is a good option to choose when you're setting up a group that is more informal, such as um, a community of interest group or a social group. Think about foodies group or a ski club or a hike club. Um, those types of groups on the internet are good to make open because it'll allow users or staff to join and leave the group or those types of groups at their own uh, volition. Managed is a little more prescriptive. It will allow only people with view and edit permission to remove people or add people to this group page. And that's what I'm going to choose for my human resources group here. The last one closed. Uh, this is an option if you are using a third party user identity provider system like Active Directory or Okta or G Suite. If you are syncing your users from a third party system like any of those, you can choose the closed membership option to actually sync a Thought Farmer group with an existing group of people on that external provider. In this case, I don't have that set up, so I'm going to stick with managed. I'll click on view change here to start adding some people to my group page. I want to make sure that I add myself as well in case where in the case where I need to be a member of the group. If you set up a group yourself, it's not going to automatically add you as the author as a member of this group. So if this is a group you're setting up for your own team, make sure to add yourself in the people box here in group members. I'll click on add and done. And now we can see that there are five members in this group. At any point in time, can I come back and edit this group page, remove people or add more people as needed? You'll notice here as well that there's an option to use the membership as a security group. This is a nice little shortcut. If you are planning to use the human resources team and apply them as security permissions on other pages on the internet, Selecting this button is a good thing to do. It's going to create now a security group in Thought Farmer that has all of the people in this group and you can use it as a security group either on this page, but also on any other page or section that you set up on the internet. So I'm going to select that. 
and then I'm going to go and publish my page. This is what it looks like. I have all of my five members on the left, my description in the center, and then an update feed on the right hand side. If I open up my page header, this kind of shows you all of the more detailed information about the group page as well as some advanced options. If I go into the security tab, you're now going to see that the permissions are showing this human resources group that I've just set up from the membership. If I wanted to give everybody in the human resources team edit permission on my page, I can do that by clicking the pencil icon, finding my human resources team, and just selecting that slider so that everybody can edit as well. From here too, I can make any changes removing other people or perhaps giving other certain groups just view permission. I'm gonna click on save and we'll see that update here. And then any new page that I'm going to create underneath my human resources group is going to take the same security permissions as the main group page. It's going to inherit down. So that means that it, as I build out my group, I don't have to worry about setting different security permissions for each, and, each single page that I create. Let's add some more content. So I have my group here, it's fairly empty. I'm going to add an area where I can put some policies in place. So again, I'll click on add. I can again put in my title and a little description. And in the content type this time, I'm going to create a section page. This policy section is going to have a lot of individual pages underneath it that explain different policies for the organization. I'll go ahead and publish my page. As we publish it, we will also review the security settings for this page and we'll see that that is exactly the same as that main human resources page. Under securities, I'm gonna add my first policy. It'll be a vacation policy. I select my title. In this case, I'm going to leave it just as a page and I'm going to find some content to put on this page. What I'm doing in this case is copy pasting some information from another system that I have in place. This is something that you'll end up doing a lot during that initial phase of the internet where you're migrating content over. If you are copy pasting information into the Thought Farmer site, one good thing to do, common good practice, is to remove the formatting after you've pasted content in. I'm going to select all the text, and then I'm going to find my remove formatting button here in the toolbar, click it, and it'll bring back my default internet font, internet headings, and all of the usual formatting that I've set up in my site settings. Doing this as you migrate content over will ensure that your internet and all of your pages have a really nice, polished and consistent look and feel to it. I've added all my content. I'm gonna click on publish and my first policy is now in place. If I go back to my human resources page, you'll see that on the left hand side that content is now building out. I'm going to add one more page here, one more content type to look at, and I'll make it a forum. So again, I'm going to click on add, and I'll call this one human resources Q&A. Under content type in this case, I'm going to select the forum type. Again, if you want, you can add a little description. going to go ahead and publish my page. If you want a little bit more control over forum pages, you can choose to lock the page. If you choose lock this page, it's going to avoid any people who have edit access in this forum to edit or make any changes to the main forum page, what I'm looking at here. Only the page owner in this case will be able to make changes. People with edit and 
view permission will still be able to add form posts to that form. I'll click on publish. And now it's ready for me to start adding topics. Again, if I go back to my human resources page on the left hand side, you'll see that content build out. In this case, though, I find that the navigation on the left hand side is a little hard to miss. So I want to make sure that all of those links to the policies in the Q&A form can be viewed here from the center column. Luckily, this is something that can easily be done by editing the template and the cards on our page. So let's take a look on how to do that. I'll click on edit the page. And under the content type and template, I'm going to click on setup cards. This gives you a little bit of an overview of everything that's available on this group page. We can see the body, which is the description of our group. We can see that the group members are living on the left hand side and there's an activity feed on the right. I'm going to go ahead though and modify this template to optimize it for my HR group. First thing I want to do is put my group members in the center column. I want to make sure that front and center everybody can see who is a member of this group. I also want to add that navigation overview in the center of the page. And for that, I'm going to add a new card. There's many different cards that you can add to any page, whether it's a group page, the home page, or just a regular policy page. And all of them are listed here in the card library. In this case, I want to select a navigation page. I'm going to go ahead and find my detailed directory navigation, and I'll add that in the center column and make sure it is listed right underneath the body where I have my description. From here, I can move things around. I can play with the layout of the page. If I click on the right hand side upper icon here, it will give you the option to select a two column layout or, or two types of three column layouts, whether it is with a wide center or an evenly split left and center column, right and center column. I'll leave it as a three, uh, three column layout now. And to make things interesting, I'm actually going to add an anniversary card. I'll click on add, select anniversary, and I can now set it up. What this card does is it actually celebrates and displays uh, anniversary days for staff within the company. There's a few different options here, whether or not you want to scope everyone in the organization to have their anniversary highlighted or just people for a specific group include new hires or show any anniversaries that are occurring every five years. For now, I'm going to leave the options to the default and just add it to my page. Click on done and click on save my page. And now this page already looks a lot more like what I want it to look like. So remember that templates are something that you can do and really use to optimize any sort of content that you set up on the internet. You do also have the option as an administrator to really define the types of templates that you have across the internet and customize them across the organization. This is something that we're going to take a look at in our admin panel training video. So make sure to check that out as well. For now, this was a short overview on how to add content to your internet. Hopefully it was helpful and we're looking forward to see you in the next training video.